think uh, we're up. I'll, I'll, okay, well, uh, what's going on, guys? I'm going to go ahead and pull it up on uh, my uh, on my web browser so that I can answer any questions anybody's got, anybody has. Jeez, guy talk today. <laughs> What up, King? How you doing, man? My internet's working. How about yours? Yeah, it's finally working. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me mute this. It's great when the internet works. Oh man, yeah. Especially when you when you get the fiber line, you understand uh, how fast it goes, and then oh, you can you can all be taken away from you in a second. <laughs> man, you were rocking so hard. Yeah, man, and I, then was, I was in the you zone. Were not. <laughs> Walter is in the house. What up, BG? Yeah, yeah. So, shall we get this party rolling, or should we chit chat for a little longer? Oh yeah. Oh, when when's your next set? Next week. Well, I forget. Oh, what day? And, are you? Unless I'm Thursday. Uh, oh, that like after crush. After or? you, after crush. Got it. So you go, and your set starts at what? Six, six for eight, you? Six to eight for me, yeah. Yeah. E EST. So maybe next week, Crush will actually have his first official set. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were on the, we were doing the interview on the, <laughs> on the DJology thing. I was using my phone as a modem, and I guess he had tried to, to come in with his phone for whatever happened at his house. And I was like, this isn't working, man. My phone can barely handle one-on-one -on -one interview right now. <laughs> God, I had to reboot the thing three times. Uh, I watched that. And then Evan's sound started cutting out real crazy. Yeah, digital, like, hell, whatever that was. <sighs> he sounded like a robot. Yeah, that's why we had to re restart it like three times. But, you know, it was it was a success, man. I had 25 people, you know, that wanted to join the group. And then um, it was it was really cool. So we'll get some more people on there. It'd be fun. Oh, look, here we are. OK, I'm pulling it up. So so, King, this was your your uh, ask. So we got a quick question. Uh, I, I'm uh, just going your bidding, whatever it is, I will tell you. Sure. Um, uh, uh, Greg, what camera are you having on you? Great resolution and autofocus. This is, um, I'll show you the box if I can find it. It's a Logitech. It's like the 966 or something. King, I, th I feel like you have the same one. A lodgy one over here, like over here, that's um 720 or whatever. But right now, the one I, what I'm using for right now is whatever's connected to the uh, the desk, desktop Mac. Mac, what, what are they called? The, the, the not the laptops or MacBooks, this is the iMac or whatever. I'm using the C920. Z920. C. I've got the $30, 30 version you get at Walmart that's left from when everybody went through the shelves already <laughs> for my live stream. <laughs> Here's a link to it if you're interested. This one's been around for a long time and people really like it as far as like money to quality. Uh, I don't know how well it works. Like if you were trying to do green screen, I, I don't feel like it would work very well. Well, it's it's more sophisticated than what I've been using for my broadcast. What are, yeah. what are you what are you uh, using for green screen camera? Well, it's it's a Logitech and it only shoots out 720. It's like the 720 version of this one. This one's 720. Is it? Well, it's a, it's a thirty dollar version of whatever this is. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> one will do 1080, but I think it only does it at 30 frames a second or something like that. There's some sort of trade-off on quality and frame rate. I'll take a look. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, this is what I'm using, the $40 one. I'll put the... At the gig, I started 
at the beginning of the year, I was actually um, doing a lot of camera work because I was playing between band sets. And so they have screens all over the venue. So I was running, you know, video mixes when I was playing. But when the band would come on, I would run a camera on them. So I was using a GoPro and it worked really well. But then it was like, well, what if I add another camera and another camera? But the quality with this one wasn't really there for, for that environment. But Well, I got a question then. Are the new GoPros uh, just USB plug in and play? I have like a really old one. Then. It's like HDMI out. Um, I have the, the Black Hero 7. Okay, you have like a 4 or something. And it actually has HDMI out on it. The thing about this camera, though, uh, it's like the new ones. Well, this one is 4K, but it will not give you real-time 4K output, which is not great. So what do you, what do you, do you, can you dumb it down or are you just stuck with the 4k? No, you, you only get 1080 live output. Okay. Which is probably fine for most people. It, it was really fine for me, but I was like, why can I not get a 4k signal out of this thing live? But it just doesn't do it. I think some of the older ones might, but this one doesn't. Their newest camera, you have to buy like a hot shoe thing to even get HDMI out of it, which seems oh. like kind of a rip. <laughs> so I didn't go that route. Cause when I bought it, the hot shoe wasn't even out yet. So that's the feature of the GoPro. <laughs> we got GoPro. It was like every street, every stream turns into about streaming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah GoPro yeah, eight doesn't have a, a separate device for HDMI capabilities. Yeah, that's dumb. Yeah. Do you think it's like that because it's so small and like you know people jump off cliffs with it and go, I don't know, surfing? You think it has anything to do with that, or do you think it's just a money grab? I think it's a money grab, for yeah. real. <laughs> All right, right, so you heard it first. Okay, so yeah, you, uh, lots of questions I have about this. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. So the one thing about this is the way my audio is hooked up, you're not going to see, you're not going to hear any audio, but you're, you'll see the results of it being used. So hopefully that's good enough. Yeah. Um, At least I don't think you'll hear it. Well, knowing how to do it is half the battle. Half the battle. <laughs> uh, what does it say? You can use your Canon DSLR as a webcam with a USB cable from uh, but only for Windows. Yeah, I have a DSLR. I was here, I think it was Joshua Carl was talking about that, that they had come out with some new drivers so that you could do that. They're all in beta. My oh. Canon DSLR is too old for that action. Well, I have a, oh, I forgot the number, but it was right before they went, it was the last one they made before they went to 4K. It was like, a, it's a 1080, so. Uh, Mine is a T2i. Oh, I think I have a T8 or something. I bet they stick it up. T sticker right here. Hold on. Oh, Yuma says, not true. I have an old Canon. What Canon do you have? What model? And it works on the Mac. I got an 80, 80D. 80. Let's see it. Looks so, official. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll have to research and see how I can uh, maybe do some green screening with it or something. I don't know. I um, Good tutorial. I would think that the GoPro would make a great green screen camera, but I haven't tried it. Yeah, I got a GoPro too. I, I, I wanted to do multi, multiple camera stuff, so well, you only have so many cords here to work with <laughs> without going on Amazon and making something else happen. I bought a thousand feet of uh uh what is this cat six cable <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the cripper to come in because in one room of my house i have the modem and then i also had to get this other box that crush told me to buy let me buy it. let me find it well if crush tells you to buy it you gotta get it 
It's a TP five port gigab gigabit thing. TP link. Yeah. So here was my, my question and crush was like, Oh, you need to buy this. So my question was if I have my, my, my I'm DJing on one and sending a uh, video, right. And then I'm sending it to uh, the, the iMac and there's only one uh, RJ 45 cord and the RJ 45 cord uh, would be going to the internet. So I was like, how do I, you know, stream into one computer plus, plus uh get to the web if there's only one jack in the back of the thing <laughs> so he told me to get this thing i haven't got it all working yet because i'm waiting for the ends of the uh whatever they are what are they called cat five ends with the so Kemper. you bought a spool yeah bro <laughs> 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 let me turn this off go to preferences uh virtual background none Curtis has been looking for this after forward to this After Effects tutorial. Well, <laughs> as you can see, this After Effects tutorial has turned into a streaming tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like ready to go. It, it see, all comes back to streaming. Yeah, because the problem was, you know, I had I have the modem um, in the garage because it, like half of my garage is the studio, but it's not enough to do a green screen over there. It, so I made another room in the house, the green screen streaming room. And it, and literally it's like, it's a, it's about 150 feet from one to the other. And I was like, okay, well we need to get all this working. So it, it's a work in progress. I'll probably be calling you when I can't figure something out. <laughs> Easy took my advice and he got a uh, power line that he had some trouble getting hooked up, but he got it working. So no long cables running through the house because this lady was not about that life. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. You did say the power line. And then Evan's like, power line? Oh, hell no. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, everybody's got like their own, their own thing, I guess. But I guess, you know, I'm only going to plug this in when I need to stream. Right now it's just on wireless. But I was like, if I want that solid line. No, you might as well just leave it up all the time. A switch is not going to do anything. I might have somebody come over to the house and start, you know, a little dig it through the attic or something. I don't know. Yeah, you were saying that they wouldn't run you a line direct to the room that you needed, right? Oh, they said I had a choice of one or the other. And if I wanted to rent out the, this room that I'm in right now, because I did that in the past, um, then the modem would be in a renter's room. And I, uh, I didn't want that. And that was All right. that's that's the dilemma. All right, do we have any questions? Am I missing anything over here? Uh, Easy sent a link about uh, GoPro versus studio camera. Oh, sweet! That looks interesting. Easy says no long cables. Keep that <laughs> lady happy. There you go. All right, I'm going to start building this. Sweet. And this isn't something I've done in a while, so hopefully I will remember. Oh, you haven't done this in a minute? No. But well, it's I not hard. It. No? So I'm just setting up a basic project, 720, 30 frames a second. It's a 10 second duration just to get something on here. Maybe I'll make it 30. You with me so far? Yeah, new project, 30 frames a second. Well, it's a 1280 by 720. Okay, cool. Yeah. Make it 1080? You, you afraid of that 1080 game? I'm, I, I'm not about it. <laughs> it's, too, it's too high res. I can't take it. <laughs> All right. So you know how like, uh, well, there's different ways, I guess, of doing it. What, you ever see some of those YouTube videos where people are talking? It'll be their logo or something in the center of the screen. And then around, it'll be like a, a reactive wave every time they, they're, you know, EQ. So it's like an EQ system of some sort. Yep. It's basically all the same thing. It's just the way that you map the line. There's a good chance that my machine will get stuck while doing this. Great. So 
So, all right, I'm going to make a new solid. And I'm going to change it to black. So there you got your solid. So in effects, you're going to go look for generate. And there's two different types. There's the audio spectrum and audio waveform. We're going to have to look at both of them because I don't remember which one does what. So we'll do audio spectrum. I guess I should bring this over so that you can actually see. This and window. if you were to import a um, uh, audio file, does it matter? Like if like if you had an hour file versus you know like we, would your timeline be that long? I mean, would you recommend something like that? Well, you uh, let me import something and we'll talk about that. So. Let me just go to some edit that I've done recently. And you did you do the audio reactor wave for uh, Smash uh, Smash Vision? Like I think I saw your you in there, dude. Did something? I was typing. Yep, it in. those are all me. The syncs. Yeah, you do you do them all? Well, I created the template. Oh, okay, so you just stuff it in there and go, like the mm -hmm. audio file, and then I guess they put the album artwork or whatever. Yeah, I made a template and then I made instructions on how to use it. So, okay, so I've pulled in this audio file in here. And if I pull this down to this little kind of film reel looking thing, that will make a new comp that is the length of the audio file for you. Um, I don't think my computer caught exactly. Could you just do that one step again? Okay, I will make another one. So. This is a WAV file. Yep, yep. I'm going to pull it down to this little thing right there. See how I get that plus? <laughs> it doesn't do it. What You're is, not seeing it? No, it? <laughs> oh, it's okay. Oh, <laughs> man. Do I need to turn on some sort of cursor? I see your cursor, but as soon as you said you started to move it or clicked and moved it, yeah. I was like, yeah, it, it was still on that file. Okay, well, take my word for it. Okay, so you're clicking that and putting so it So when I, I click it, the icon changes and it has a plus symbol on it. Okay, so then I'm pulling it down here to this little film strip okay, kind of yep. underneath there and I let go and it makes a new comp that's the length of the audio file. So it generates that for you auto magically. I, I was able to make it out kind of that time. Oh, I can kind of see it on the playback. Perhaps I was moving too fast. Yeah, I mean, you're just too fast, bro. All right, I'm going to make a new solid. So solid. <laughs> you with me? Solid. <laughs> <laughs> That's solid, bro. <laughs> okay, so since I picked audio spectrum last time, it's my last effect up here. So you can just pick it right there. Audio spectrum. Okay. So see, the first thing on the list of different options you have is your audio layer. So I'm going to pick my audio layer. And there, see, I've already got some movement. So there it goes. That was really quick. Yeah. <laughs> did you think it was so much more complicated than that? Yeah, I did. So here you've got your start frequency, your end frequency, and your number of bands. So if I pull these bands down, see I have fewer lines. Oh, that's not exciting. And you can uh, you can make these larger, and you can make them fatter. And this by default the softness is turned all the way on. You can turn that down or leave it up, however you want. And by default you get this pink color. I don't know why they chose that, but you know, it has an inner and outer core to it. So, you know, you can mix and match as you see fit. That is so cool. So there you go. And so you can change up your frequency bands so that if you wanted it to not have so much bass, you could pull that down. Or if you didn't want so much trouble, you could, you know, kind of pull that the other way I get it and make a different look okay and that's pretty you, much all you did you, for... you were not expecting it to be this easy 
No, it wasn't. Uh, so what's the difference between the, what was it, audio spectrum and audio wave? You told me there was two different ones. Yeah, let's, let's, the, let, let's see. What's the other one do? This is under generate. Did I do wave or spectrum? There, okay. There it is. okay, so this one is more like a sound wave rather than individual bands. See that? Oh, okay, yeah. So it has the same type of controls. You know, you got your thickness and you got your maximum height. So what's kind of cool with this is you can have how many samples like during playback that you actually see. So you can get like fewer or you can get more. So it has a different kind of look. So you also have some display options down here where you can do um, like digital. <clears throat> so you kind of have this straight line look. And then you also have dots. Oh. You got it? Yeah, that was cool. You following me? Sure. <clears throat> so excuse me. When you do when the when Smash Vision or, or Marks or whoever over there, you know, plugs in your template, what what the uh, what look did that have versus or what you know? versus what we went over here. I mean, was it this a little more detailed, do you think? Or the album artwork was just in the front or? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you can lay this out however you want. I'll go over some, some different layouts to kind of, you know, give you an idea of what you can, how you can freak this. Oh yeah, let's pimp it up. So I made a mask, did you catch that? Yeah. So currently it's masking everything out. So I'm going to go to my mask and I'm gonna change it from add to none. And then on my, well, that's not my waveform. I'll just copy the one that I have over here. Okay, so you have a path option. So I can select that and now it's oh. around the path. So, oh, that it, is so dope. So you, I mean, you've probably seen this a hundred times. It's like every, like, trap. There's some <laughs> trap yeah, yeah. YouTube channel, and they they make like some visualizer thing, and so it's just you know it's a variation of this. But I see the, um, I see the lines. You know how. Um... It's like connected, I guess I would say it's uh, like a web. Like I see those are lines. Is that like a different thing that they're doing? Do you want me to go ahead and try and find one? Or is it like they blurred, made them connect together? Well, I'll take my softness down and I will make them bigger. So see now it's connected. Okay. And then you could bring this, you know, how many you have and then make it thicker. Um, it's very rounded on the edges, though. Oh, there you go. I mean, you could tweak these settings, you know, all day. And if there's too much going on, I feel like there's a way for you to kind of calm it down some. I guess just this displayed samples. If there's not, if there's more, then. Yeah, it seems like it's all over the place, right? I, I got to pull my height way down, I think. Now you can't see anything.
Whoa. <laughs> so let's say I had another mask in here. And I'll set it to none. Okay. And then I'll take this and nope. See, it's an either or type of situation. So it's outside or inside. So what would you have to do? Just make another audio waveform? Can you copy? You make you just make another page? make another layer. So let's say this one's on mask two, and instead of lines, I do dots. You'll see this look a lot. And so it's kind of like they're working together, but it's based on the same audio. I'm feeling like this example is too extreme and I just need to like reset. It's on crack or something, bro. It's all over the place. <laughs> So there's the default. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a little more calm down. Oh, there you go. What did you What did you do there? I changed it to digital on display options. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. That looks more like what I've seen before. Let's make it a little bit taller. Uh, maybe so this one I can't control the frequency it doesn't have that on waveform right so on spectrum I could probably reel this in a little bit Well, it might help if I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's dope. What am I missing? <laughs> That'd help. <laughs> so I need these to be a lot taller. Maybe pull that in my frequency a little bit. It's too much. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let's try uh, thickness. Oh yeah, there you go. That's pretty smooth. <laughs> now imagine that you're hearing the music. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool because you can, you can, so if you were gonna make like a remix video and you had a bunch of B file or B footage, we'll say. And would you render this out through After Effects with Alpha file and then put it in Premiere? Would you take... Yeah, see, when I activate my Alpha so you can see what's Alpha, that's all good to go. So you could overlay that on whatever you wanted. Yeah, but would you... How, how would you recommend getting the finished product would you render render this out with alpha from after effects and then go into premiere and put it in yeah okay i mean the way that i usually work is whatever my um break is that i want to use this on i'll render that whole section and bring it in and put this on top of it and maybe play around with the blend modes to kind of get a feel for what it's looking like Okay. So I might re render that whole section. I'll render it out like you're in Premiere. So I do it from Premiere, bring it into After Effects, do some overlays or whatever, and then just render that sequence. Or you could only render these waves, either or. Sure call, buddy. Okay. Okay. We got <laughs> options. 
And it, let's say you wanted to do a spectrum. Can you like uh, automate color so it does more like more color, like a scroll? Can you do color scroll automation, or is that like? Let's try. So here's my inside color. I'm gonna option click there, and there's an expression that you can do time. So I'm gonna do time, time times. 100 and then you hit enter it doesn't like that so that's not going to work <laughs> okay so you get the one color and you're, you're, you're going with so you got to make keyframes oh okay instead of like automation yeah so i could make a keyframe and then pick another color make a keyframe pick another color oh okay make a keyframe something else and so this is going to be blending over time if you wanted it to change like on the beat color you can do this you can do a hold keyframe so i go down here to keyframe assistant and i change this to toggle hold keyframe see how it has this kind of like start point and then it's flat so it doesn't change color until it hits that mark. So it's not fading. It's just holding until there's that new keyframe. Okay. Well, damn. <laughs> there you have it. I was going to try something like if I made I feel like it's going to bring it in as multiple points, but let's say that I've got this line. I'm an illustrator now. Oh, and, okay. I'm go and I'm going to just make this kind of circular line thing. What's probably going to happen is if I pasted that on here, I'll get rid of my mask. is that it's going to only let me see the, it divides up all of all of them up into different ones so if i go up and i try to pick a path i have to pick a certain one for it to be on but it would be cool if i could put them on all of them at the same time yeah so you'd have to make a different one for every but that is not an option apparently oh sorry kids was kind of excited. Yeah. Um, what else can we talk about? <laughs> I don't know. Who's got questions in there? Anybody got questions inside uh, inside the chat? I don't know. That was pretty exciting. Boom. Boom. I'm going to have to go, you know, when I get this recording, I'm going to go back and <laughs> probably do this like a hundred times so, so that I know it cold. I'll talk about a different way of doing something sort of like this, and we'll see how far we get. So I'm going to make a new solid, and I'm going to use the Saber plugin, which is free from Video Copilot. So you get this. Saber's free? Yeah, it's free. So right. it works in a similar way to um, what we were just doing as far as, you know, generating lines, but it's not audio reactive. But you can customize the course. So I'll do the same thing where I'm just gonna make a circle mask. And then I'm going to customize the core to use the layer mask. So now I got a circle. So what you can do is change the Offset, I think, is what I'm going. Oh, somebody wants. Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Somebody wants to know if you can map this to text. Yeah, I'll show an example of it. So you see how it's. Uh, I'm pulling it back from the start and stop point. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to first. I'm going to go to my audio layer. Oh, somebody asked if um, Final Cut could do this. I think there is a plugin 
we'll try and look it up that does something similar to this. Um, uh, I had something pop up, you know how they have those commercials before you watch like a YouTube video or whatever. And it was like these people that had tons and tons of like after or final cut pro like plugins. And the guy was like throwing a, uh, like a light ball, like back and forth to his hand. I was like, how does that work? I'll, I'll find a link. I'll, I'll find the link. Okay. So, so I'm going to, I've selected my audio layer and I'm going to convert to audio keyframes. I covered this in my, um, what was it that I did? Vegas and After Effects tutorial, but it's a good place to just do it again. So it's going to generate these three sets of keyframe channels. And so what I usually do is just delete left and right, and then you have both channels. So if you click on this box, this graph editor, and you click, here are your keyframes from your audio. So the, the numbers that you wanna take into consideration are what is your highest number and what is your lowest number? So I'm around like eight and around 60. So just keep that in mind. So on here, where I've, do I set up a keyframe? So I do the start offset. I'm gonna option and click. So this gets your um, expression activated. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna type in linear and then I'm gonna pick whip up to the slider. Oh, wow, okay. So now I'm gonna do a comma and I'm gonna say eight and 60. I'm gonna do another comma, zero and 100. I'm gonna close that up, hit enter, hopefully it works and there you go. So now <laughs> the circle is opening and closing based on the loudness of the music. And you can see it's a little bit more where it seems to be loud most of the time so when you have these numbers in here, you can go down and, and bring it down. So you can say, well, let's try a 30. Still pretty loud. All that compression. Let's try a 10. Oh, so it'll just blink now on or off, right? Yeah, let's look at the wave again. Look at these keyframes. So it might be that you'd want it to be more like 30 and 60. So I'll try that. And you could just pick with this direct, but then you don't have any control about how it reacts. So this, no. this is giving you a threshold to work with. Well, that's kind of neat. I don't feel like this is the best example of this, but you could also, you know, parent this to scale, or you could parent it to um, location, whatever you wanted to do. Yeah, what else would you want to do with the Saber plugin? With Saber specifically? Oh, someone asked about text. I guess I could show how that works. So you want to make a text layer specifically for your text. So we'll say text and uh, maybe get something a little chunkier. Oh, can you add trails or whatever to the light? Saber effect? Trails? Yeah, it's almost like, oh, now it just needs some trails to linger the color. Hmm. Possibly. 
All right, so Saber, here's my Saber layer. I'm gonna change the core type to text layer, and then it lets you pick what text layer it's affecting. Oh, that's cool. So it comes in super hot. <laughs> but there's a whole lot of presets, and you can do something like, I don't know if they, oh, and my original layer is still on, so I'm gonna take that off. So it's still beat reactive based on that setup that I did before. Wow. So you could typically have the title of the song or track or whatever, and, and it's turning on or off to the, mm -hmm. to the beat. Got it. And Saber's got some things like this flicker intensity that you can do. So you can see as I'm moving it, it kind of, it's kind of coming in and out. So that's a little bit more of a neon type of look. Wow, that's cool. And this is all based, I believe, on like the size of your text. So if I scale this up and position it, everything stays with it. Now that's super exciting. So you'll notice, King, you'll appreciate how fast my rendering is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why Sa I pretty much given up in After Effects. Yeah, Saber is pretty slow to render. Oh, is it? It's, yeah, it's not, it's not fun. So just, yeah. But it's free. I mean, what do you want, man? <laughs> you can change the color of the, of the light and everything, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, pretty much anything you want? Uh, oh, yeah. wow. And see, they got all kinds of like, here's a setting called Ghostbuster. It's kind of like, it's got some waviness happening to it. Oh, um, maybe you missed the, the, the link. I'll, I'll, I'll post another link. Someone was asking where to get the Saber plugin. I, I'll, I'll post it again. Oh, did you post that? What a guy. I did. What I a did. guy. And for text, it has some uh, customized core settings. Uh, is that what I'm looking for? Or maybe it's glow. It's this alpha mode so that you could cut out. Well, it's using this mask and that's not what I want. I need to get rid of that. Um, what plugin is, what, uh, what setting was this? It's preset, what preset was this? This one's called Tractor Beam. Oh, cool. But see down here where you have render settings, you can change. Um, so there it's just doing like the outside, but you kind of get a little bit of overlap. Invert that. But you see, they got a whole lot of presets. Yeah, that's exciting. Presets are going to take me like five years to like <laughs> see. <laughs> this computer is horrible for rendering. I got to get a I got to get a Windows computer like you. King says, uh, or no, Easy says, King loves orange. <laughs> yeah, I'm all about that orange. Orange. <laughs> um. What else we want to talk about? I don't know. When I was got, it said there was a hundred free. When I when I posted that that link for Saber, it was like, oh, it said something about a hundred free. Like, how many free uh, plugins are there on uh, on this video copilot thing? Anything else you got from there that you're like super excited about? That was probably less exp like inexpensive. Well, let's talk about it. I gotta change my sharing. All 
All right. We seeing this? I, I yeah, you up. So there is an orb. Um, I think that's what it's called. That's free. Is this it? No, that's not it. This thing is pretty essential if you're working in After Effects a lot, this uh, console plugin. Console and, plugin. And what it does is like, am I back? Can you see my After Effects again? Yep. OK, so if you can set your your control keys however you want. But I think by default, it's control spacebar, and you get this little thing here. So like if I'm on this this layer and I hit control space bar and I want to put you know key light on it or whatever I just type in key and then it comes up and I can select it so that way you don't have to go digging in here you know if oh you so start that wasn't like a piece of hardware that was a piece of software yeah that's that's software from video copilot that's oh, okay. free um, so it's really handy. It saves you a lot of digging in the menu. If there's stuff that you like to use all the time, uh, you can you can do sort of the same thing if you go into your effects and presets panel and go in here and type it. But I mean, I feel like it's so much easier to just you know put it in, and then when you let go, it just pops it in. Wow. Yeah, it's a time saver. Another thing that it does that it's really handy is taking a picture of whatever your scene is. So I can take a picture and then I have, it'll keep whatever you've been working on, it'll keep that up there, but you can export it out. You can save it as a PNG. It'll keep the transparency, save it as a JPEG, whatever you're doing. This oh, comes, really? Yeah, this comes in really handy. And like I was saying, Saber, you know, renders really slow. A lot of times I'll just take a picture of something that I made in Saber and then animate it, you know, later. I probably got one in here. So like, here's a circle like that. That's something that I've used before. Are any of these kind of like complex builds with like a radial thing? Anything that's gonna like slow your machine down on rendering and basically all you want is like a still, I'll just, you know, Take a picture of it and pull it in. Hmm. Saves a lot of processing time. What else you got, King? <laughs> I don't know, man. You're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> All right, so we, we um, uh, since I was going over the audio reactor type stuff, I mean, are do you? Like, how well do you use Mix Emergency to, like, make it audio beat friendly? Do you use that a lot? As in, like, effects on the yeah. the sequencer? Yeah, pretty much. Since we were covering reactive to audio stuff. I have a few of those set up, but I don't use them that much. Got it. Pretty I, much because I think... you do all your work po uh, post anyway, so... Yeah, I'm I'm more about using the uh, sampler for effects. We we can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, I don't know if I'll I'll have a way to completely demo how that works, but let's say because um, I have a pack for sale. Yeah, you have a, put the link in the. Do you I. And I, it doesn't really exist anywhere other than you getting at me saying that you want it and we'll we'll talk about it. But do you have it, King? Do you know what I'm talking about? Your pack? Yeah. No, I don't think I do. I mean, I, mem I remember there was this one pack with uh, like triangles and lines, like a saber pack, like that mm -hmm. was like a square that would shoot out at you. I remember that was floating around. I don't think I ever got it. I don't... But I'd be willing to buy it off you. <laughs> I like sample packs. I think you had sold a bunch of them, and, and then Crush was trying to get you to make some more. <laughs> yeah, it was on the vi the Visual Eye Candy store when that was going. 
So yeah, we gotta get some updates. You guys want some updates? <laughs> Here's a a plugin from. Um, well, this is really a script. It's not really. It's not so much a plugin. This is a Beat Assistant, and I gotta give a shout out to. I think it's Paul G. Not not Paul G. Some other Paul bit was the editor for a long time. He was on Blast Bids. You know what I'm talking about? No, Paul, my, my my buddy Paul is the only Paul I remember, like video editing. He's the one that first told me about uh, AE scripts. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm all about that type monkey now that I figured it out. <laughs> Anything other than type monkey you recommend? Since I since we're on AE. Space. Everything. Everything, yeah. <laughs> I know. I ended up buying this other one off of Video Hive that was like, oh yeah, 500 word effects. And I was like, yeah, sign me up. I need it. <laughs> this is it. V edit. Man, this thing is so, expensive. So, so what's this is not it. Okay, so like, let's say I can put my tempo in here and it does all this auto detect, which I don't trust all this business. I just, you know, you know what your tempo is. So beat so, assist is something that you buy or uh, off of uh, AE scripts? Yeah. So let's say that on this layer, I'm going to change the scale to this BPM. And I'm going to set it. I'm going to set the. This is my beginning number. And then I'm going to type in that I want it to change on every beat. And this is a 2D value. And so on the beat, I want it to be at a hundred and then you say generate keyframes. So I put the link in the description for you. Okay. So see all these keyframes and now it's going to scale on that BPM. Oh, I think someone's asking you how much you're selling your samples for 20 sample bucks, pack. 20 bucks sample pack. There you 20 go. Bucks. Or you could just make this. I mean, this is not, it's not rocket science, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing you can do with this is you can create a grid, which is, can be helpful. So I'm gonna do a grid. I guess I'll just do one on every beat and then I'll say generate. I think I have to be off or no, I want markers. Beat assist is no longer available. That's what it's Oh no. So you're going to have to give you 20 bucks. <laughs> well, it looks like they had some, they got this beat edit. This is probably the same thing. This is probably something newer that I haven't even checked out yet. Oh. Oh man. Oh, I'm getting excited. I got to get on it. Create be Oh man. Look, look it's a waveform. Look at this king. Yes, that's what I want. <laughs> Here I am living in the old school. Well, now we know how to do it for real. And then if you want to get a plug-in, I guess you can get a plug-in. It's all about being different, right? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to try generating markers on every fourth beat. So this would be down and up. So that's actually happening four times until it's back to zero. All right. One, two, three, four. So the way that I made mine is basically like where this color glow is, I could set some of those keyframes that are gonna be, um, do the toggle hold. Uh, I'm going to come back and make change this. 
to every beat so I can see this. Okay. So we got a green. Oh, fancy. Okay, so every time it hits, it changes color, is the idea. So, oh, okay, yeah. In Mix Emergency, it's possible to take this and map it so that it's using, it's, Serato is gonna pass the BPM information on to Mix Emergency. And you can set it up in the sample player so that when it loops, it's looping to the same beat. There's a few okay. numbers you and settings you have to plug in. I'm gonna have to go over that at another time. I'm not prepared to to show okay. it. But but you but you have to do a little bit of work when you put it into mix emergency for it to be on beat with the beat grid from Toronto. Yeah, you and you you need to make sure um you have the tempo set. I actually have a uh, a tutorial that I made about this that I'll put in the link somewhere so people can see it. It's not like super hard, right? No, but it, if you didn't know the concept, I couldn't like just do this. You know, it's not <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not that easy. Any other questions? No, no questions are coming in. Anybody got questions in the chat? Oh, typically how much does, oh, the sample packs go for, uh, oh, somebody said Paul Surreal. Is that somebody that rings the Paul bell? Surreal, that's the guy. What's okay. Paul Surreal up to? <laughs> no, did someone type his name? I don't know if I, I, I don't, I, I've never heard of him. Yeah, Walter's all over it. He's like, is that the visual eye candy pack? <laughs> does he, does Walter have it? I don't know if he has it or not. Oh, we have to wait a second or so. I, we're, we're faster than what's, what's going to the Facebook. Or maybe he had checked out. Oh, this is a friend of his. All right, so that's how that works. <laughs> okay, I found the link. So there. Watch that. Is that for and you'll tutorial? you'll understand how it works. So if you combine that information with what I just did, you could you could make your own. Or you could see my demonstration and be like, "Yeah, I got to have that." <laughs> and then you can hit me up and I'll sell it to you. There you go. What's your Venmo? Put it in the chat. DJ G Force. Send me all your money. There you go. Yeah, that's what I I made a bunch of hat files and put it in my uh I put a link in <laughs> I put a link in my feed when I for the you know a little bit of time I was playing. <laughs> So here it kind of walks. So here's all the different types of uh, ones that I made. It's just one bank. So there's what it looks like. Oh, that's cool. And I guess you could get that to loop if you wanted it to. Yeah, see it's looping and it's on the beat. You know, you can't hear the music, trust me. Yeah it is working <laughs> yeah i totally wasn't getting why you were changing the color of 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 it now that i see it in action it's way better yeah over the video and you can you know change your blend modes to whatever you think works good 
you can work, you can uh, have multiples of these going. But the secret sauce is the, about the way that you handle these settings so that it actually plays to the beat. Because otherwise, it's just, you know, visuals overlaying your stuff, which, you know, that's cool. But if it's on beat, that's a whole nother level right there. Yeah, I think I saw some somebody that was playing, and I was like, I don't think those visuals are on. <laughs> They're just kind of rolling. And I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I've seen some people where they'll have like something in front is at a speed and something in the back is at a speed. And it's just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be grooving to. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Usually I feel like uh, if you have like a background loop, if it's moving slower, then that makes you, your your concentration go more towards the video which to me seems like the most important thing on the screen but i don't know what do you think yeah i i think it's got to be it's got to be on point <laughs> your video your video dj and it's kind of like not a, not on beat or something's like this feels off and it kind of like takes away from the show oh yeah yeah so, so yeah i guess people didn't know uh Curtis didn't know that's how they were doing the laser effect. Yeah, just hit up G Force, uh, DJ, or is it I mean, DJ G Force at Venmo. I don't think I've seen anybody using these on the channel except for, I don't know who has them that's using them. I I saw. I think I've seen one. Yeah, I've seen people using something similar, but they were not on beat. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was referring to. So it wasn't it wasn't yours. No. <laughs> well, it could have been yours, and they didn't do the. Um, no, my I recognize mine. Mine are pretty specific in yeah, their yeah. design. Those packs saved decades. One night, uh, the nightclub light. Oh, the nightclub didn't have lights, and they used the pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <They were> like, <laughs> I remember uh, I do a club and then it would be like so dark and then they turn all the TVs on and be like, whoa, it's daytime now. <laughs> <I'll be> like, <laughs> oh, Walter's, Walter's a fan. He's got him. So yeah, anybody that's watching this, uh, hit him up. And what was that other video? That other video was just how to like install it. Yeah, how to install it. And uh, so... I think it came with like a preset so you could just drop it in there and everything would work for you. But then if you wanted to, you know, combine it with other ones, I'll show you how to do the settings and mix emergency so that it works. Cause most people aren't going to want all of them as is they're going to, you know, want to mix and match a little bit. Cool. Well, and that's how you do reactives. <laughs> so you could, you know, you could make those things like with the waves maybe that are pumping to let's say 100 bpm tempo and then maybe do some sort of design with those and save those out as a loop and so it's not actually going with the music but it is going with the tempo okay so that would be one that you could do um I've done some of these with like a 3D neon type of thing, where like the box kind of turns. There's a lot of people that have got these and they're like, okay, this is cool. Send me another pack. And I was like, oh, I don't. <laughs> I When's made the anymore. next one coming out? This is, this is it. This is what I got. And then I'm like, well, what do you want? And they're like, I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll let you know when I make something else. <laughs> do, do you need me around to challenge you <laughs> so you can show me? Yeah, I mean, if someone has the idea of what they want, you know, feel free <laughs> to let me know and I will construct it. But um, I, I, I just kind of usually base things I make on what I personally need for whatever reason, you know. Yeah. These these kind of things. If you watch the the video, um, I say, when would you want to use these? And it's kind of like if you have maybe like an EDM track and it's, you know, just a lot of people hanging around the beach and they're not really doing a whole lot, but the music's going insane. 
So, you know, you pop one of these on top of it and then you really got something going on. Uh, and it doesn't that, require you to edit. There was one effect I remember. Uh, what was, um, was it Buddha he used all the time? He, it, it, would, it would always blink like in all the color scope, you know, like, oh, off and up every time they hit, hit like something. Every time it hit like a drop or like the, the hit. Mm -hmm. the color scope would just go like insane <laughs> and then he also did some other thing like he was doing like the beat reactive stuff but you could how if you if you took like the uh the eq thing that we were working on how would you make that look like it was going into the into the distance uh you would put it in 3d space that makes sense so on that you would probably not want to use the mask yeah. and just have it like this, maybe. So. So let's say we, I, I, you know, get this thing all set up and I got it going the way I want. Like I could just save it as a template and just what, change the color or whatever for different tracks I wanted to use it on type thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. That's sweet. <laughs> Have you ever, like, made a bunch of files for After Effects and just sold, you know, like, the save session before? No. Well, that's something you might want to think about. <laughs> so here, so did you see what I did there, King? I just, you see this little cube? You yep, turn that yep. on as a 3D layer? So now I can turn it like that, but you're probably wanting something more like that. And can you, can you make the wave come in and leave? Come in and leave? Yeah, like let's say the wave's moving, like it's, it starts, it starts at, you know, like keyframe in and out or into the distance. If it was a straight line like you were going down a road or something or like the opening credits to star wars where it was so you're talking about this yeah it would, it would be that but you're but the one of the it, it, the point would be like uh, in, in direction see i want to grab this and move it like that you're talking like that well i would say you're no, no something like where you're you see your left point of the wave like we call that like a start point and then your right point of the wave we'll call the end point and then have it look like it's um uh, yeah something like that where it's like leaving the screen but if what if you wanted it to go from the bottom to the to like uh to the to the top but it got smaller as it got to the top so it looked like it was leaving leaving you type thing so you want multiple like, ins like, multiple like was, instances? Like it, was, like it was going into the distance. Yeah, like it was uh, like a line that never stops. Versus this, this looks like it's uh, like one picture, and it's not. There's no. It's not going anywhere, kind of thing. Well, here is maybe, uh, maybe I'm not explaining it right. A reptile filter, so I can expand this like that. So I'm basically just repeating it in space. Does that kind of get you there? Um, <laughs> think of think of the wave as like a like a, a like a yarn, and then one 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 piece of the yarn is at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, and then it's going to continue. Yeah, and you you would probably make that top point smaller, I think, you know, like a trapezoid, as and it would look like it was um, starting at the bottom of the screen, and 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 like it would leave towards the end of the screen, leave towards the top of the screen. It would start at the bottom and leave, so it would yeah, something like that. And it would look like it was always in motion, like it was on, on a destination. There you go. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't explaining it right. <laughs> uh oh it's locked up oh, it's oh you locked, locked. oh <laughs> okay 
Yeah, that's a, that's what I was thinking of one a different scenario. Just remember when Buddha came out, he would do like all these different like EDM things, and it. And I was like, how is he doing all this other stuff? And it and like I, I in my mind thought it was just a template when he would do the same thing over every single video, but it was very creative. So he did a different one. He did the same thing each time, you think? I think he did the same effect, but, the, you know, he, he, he spit out an alpha file and then whatever was below the wave or whatever was different video kind of thing. So I think something like this, he had a template for where he would spit out, you know, this wave and then a, like a color scope thing. And then mm -hmm. whatever was underneath was the, the B file, the B roll, that, that was all different. It was like a signature move of his of some sort. I'll have to go back and look at some of the files. It was like when he first came out and he had like 100 videos a week or whatever. <laughs> making all the money. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we were all making pennies anyway, so. At that point, I think. So here's one. One's going up and one's going down. That's what I thought I was doing. You're going to make me plug in a hard drive now. <clears throat> yeah, here's up and down. These things are not the fastest to render either. No. But I'm stacking up a bunch of effects here, so. That's a pretty hot look. Yeah, yeah, that works. Coming to an edit soon. <laughs> so you make your 3D effects moving green screens through After Effects. Oh, he wants to know about moving green screens. Um, so you yeah. make your 3D effects through After Effects? You got something for that? Sure. <laughs> sure. So if you saw my set last night, I had this set up. I didn't have any internet. <laughs> so this is um, this is Element, and um, I'm using one of their packs. I think it's called like Motion Design Two, and it just has a bunch of different elements. So I just threw a bunch of different elements into a scene to make like a virtual studio. And uh, oh, so let me import a rendered one so you can kind of see it. I saw like on your Facebook, you had uh, a bunch of mo movie videos in like a circle or like a sphere kind of thing, and your logo was up front. Yep. What's that about? It's the <laughs> same. It's the same thing. Um, Let's see. So the video would be playing on the screens. And I've set this to where it'll loop back onto itself. Oh, so you're you're DJing on those screen. How do you get the what do you set mix emergency to the, that screen or? It's uh, I'm doing an NDI to um, Resolume, and then I have another pass that is the UV map.
which looks like this. So there's where the video is going to be. And in Resolume, I can, I can switch that out so that the video is wherever this UV map is. Oh. So everything here is real time, but this is all pre-rendered. OK. So you could you know, make this to be whatever you wanted it to be. This is just what I came up with. That's dope. It's pretty slick. <laughs> it's pretty slick. Don't tell too many people about it. <laughs> so you have a two computer system when you're streaming, right? Or yeah, I use um, OBS and my system's a little bit odd, I think, than most people in that I am um, sending, I'm using OBS on my lap, on my DJ laptop. So I'm going Serato DJ through, what is that one software called? Serato DJ. Loopback. Loopback? I got Loopback going into OBS on the Mac and I got Mix Emergency going in via Siphon. So I've got NDI on my DJ laptop. I'm not streaming from OBS, but I'm sending from OBS to my PC, where I have another version yeah, what, of OBS. What's going and on the PC? That's, <laughs> that's where the, the stream actually happens. <laughs> so just sending that, that NDI signal from my DJ laptop doesn't take much processing power at all. You say, but I'm, like, I, I'm doing it that way because I can um, run my audio and video over the same connection. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's a lot. You got a lot I, I haven't heard of anyone doing it that way, but it works pretty well. And that way I don't have to deal with a whole separate audio hookup. It just all goes through one connection. Got it. So you got any more tricks for next week? You gonna do something else like this? Well, um, I've been talking to Second Nature about coming on and talking about uh, Final Cut effects and how he gets down. And we're getting closer to making that happen. <laughs> what, what does he keep giving you the cold shoulder on that? Well, he, I mean, dude's busy, you know, but and he's he's got like a stream, you know, on the channel in earlier in the afternoon. And then like today, so he was doing that. And then he had one that he's doing tonight also on a different channel. So he's pretty busy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if you ever get him to talk about Final Cut, man, that'd be great. He said he'd do it. It's just a matter of time. So maybe that'll be next week. Maybe Crush will come on. Maybe. Uh, speaking of Final Cut, man, I I, I got uh, I was telling you about I got these commercials or that come up when I was watching some YouTube videos, and I just wanted to put the put that link in there. I mean, if anybody's got any input on what that is, they're called Pixel Pixel Film Studios. I mean, whatever was in that commercial was super impressive. It was like what what's go like I wanted to learn Final Cut Pro just to be able to use what those people were doing. <laughs> I was like, that's so crazy. Yeah, you're talking about this place, right? Yeah, that was I mean, you know much about them? Yeah, I've given them more money than I should have. <laughs> you say that because <laughs> you're angry about it or I, I'm oh, not angry that. about it. Um the thing about this place is a lot of the, a lot of what they're doing is making it easier for you to do something in Final Cut X that you could do in uh um, after effects but you know they they're just taking the setup out of it so here's a visualizer v2 and look at that it's on sale 39.99 but but it let's goes to final cut let's pro see what you get. right yeah 
so do they give you um <laughs> yeah it's like what what do i actually get uh are there parameters to play around with that's what i want to know I think you could probably change the color, change the scale. They've got a bunch of different ones set up. Looks like you can move it in 3D space. Well. Well, there you go. That's kind of exciting. Yeah. I may even actually have this one. I don't know. They would, you know, once you start buying from them, they'll keep sending you emails. Hey, look at this new one we got. And for a while, it was just like multiple ones a week. They had a new plugin. It was just out of control. And you'd look at it and be like, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that. And then you'll check out and they're like, don't you want to get this too? And you're like, yeah, okay. Don't you guys have packs? <laughs> Yeah, that thing right there, if you scroll up, like, like, what, like the saber looking thing around the person, I was like, what the, what the hell is that about? But honestly, isn't it worth it if you could, you know, do that with less time than it took, if it took you less time to do it? If it like in After Effects? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to study on it to see how much time you're actually saving. Because anything you do where you're having to go in and manually draw this stuff, I feel like I don't know if it would be worth it. Let's see. He's just drawing, drawing, drawing. Wow, it looks like I'm going to have to start learning how to do Final Cut. Get used to the time. I mean, it's not a bad thing to know. I mean, this using these effects is is great, you know, just to, to change up the look of what you're doing more than anything, I think. My only my only biggest thing was I didn't know how to do fit to fill and I was like, screw this, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to the premiere, I know how to do it there. Is fit to fill really hard, like lining up the words with the tempo and stuff? I think so. You think it's hard in Final Cut? Yeah. Just because of the way that it looks. It just seems so odd to me. Yeah, that's, that's that was like my biggest fear. I was like, oh, the timeline. Why did they change the timeline? This is one that I was, I've been tempted to get and it works in Final Cut X and Motion. It's sort of like Element. I guess it's pretty much exactly like Element. But they've got a, a lot of really cool looking templates for you. You can just like throw your logo in and it'll extrude it. And it's got a lot of nice textures. So. This does a lot of the work for you type thing or no? Well, there's templates, temp there's oh, yeah. templates and they're doing a lot of the work for you. But, uh, oh, there's easy. He knows about some Final Cut X. Oh, Walter, fit to fill is like how you get uh, the original uh, music video to line up with a remix track and remix track would be a different tempo. So fit the fill was just, oh, here's my end point. Oh, here's my end point and here's my out point. And then you would just say fit the fill or whatever the command was. And it would make the video, the music video, the same speed as the remix. And it's just how you worked with it in the timeline. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to see it to really understand it, I think. But on Final Cut 7 and above, that was the way everyone worked, I felt like. Yeah, it, it was uh once you, and it, it it was a process that you just put into your subconscious after you did it like three or four times, and it was something you didn't even think about. Here's and point A. Here's point B. Here's yeah. point A. Point B of this, fit to fill. 
done. Yeah, I, I need you in there. Okay, then you work on your next thing. And then it was like, oh. I don't. <laughs> it, it basically takes care of the time stretch without you having to do it manually. Yeah. I don't know if that's still a thing. I feel like that's not a thing now. What? Fit to fill. Yeah, only old. I mean, I don't. That's what it was called. And then they got rid of it. <laughs> I think that was also a video mixed by Jordan Laws. It was called Fit to Fill. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> that's I wonder that if that's video still out there somewhere. Lingo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curtis. Thanks for hanging in here. Do you, is there something else you want to know about? Walter's hanging in here. Yeah, I don't know how many people are alive right now. Does this show you? Oh, five are alive right now. Five alive. And probably me and you and three others. <laughs> Walter and Curtis. Another thing I was going to talk about, and I didn't get time to install it, but um, HitFilm has some um, audio reactors too. You know about HitFilm King? No, I don't. So they have a free version of this, and I installed it, but it didn't come with the audio reactive stuff. But you can buy just that part of it for, you know, maybe like 10 bucks or something. But then they have a pro version of this, which is a little steeper. But this is, this is sort of like Premiere and After Effects combined into one program. Uh, they added the effects part of it to Vegas. There's like a different version of Vegas that has their effects engine built into it. And I, I didn't, I don't have it yet, but I was never really a big fan of hit film um, because basically I, I get everything I need in After Effects. But yeah. this is a kind of program where you can buy it outright and then they give you free updates for a year, but then you have to buy it again Ah. But, you know, the free version does a lot of stuff. So if you're out there on a budget, you're trying to make some things, you know, take a look. It works on the Mac and on the PC. They also have a version of all their uh, effects for After Effects, which is a little bit weird because they duplicate almost all the effects again. So I had to take it out because I kept choosing the hit film version instead of the After Effects version. So <laughs> finally, I was just like, nah, I don't need that. One of the things they do have that I really liked was a fire generator. It works really well. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I definitely have a lot of information to go on now. <laughs> That Pixel Film Studio preset looks kind of exciting. There's one called VJ or something that I had and I've used in some edits sometimes. It's kind of cool. And all it is is just like a generator of kind of like neon things. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of parameters to uh, adjust, but the things that it generates look cool. Called DJ, you said? A VJ oh, something. VJ. It's like, I want more stuff like that. That seems very specific to me. Oh, from the pixel generator, BJ. Oh, let me type that in. Light show. What does that do? Look, it's only $12. Is it audio reactive or just does that? No, it just makes these things. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Look, infinite possibilities. Damn it. This fucking pixel, oops, <laughs> this pixel thing's going to make me want to change it. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, that is yep. dope. That's yeah, quite it a definitely few. Has some cool stuff. That's quite a few cool things. Yep. <laughs> At the low, low price of twelve ninety five. You better wow. have a good graphics card to render it, though. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, and when you render out of a uh, Final Cut, you're just looking for ProRes four, four four. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, the way that this one works, it may not be alpha though. You don't think it's alpha? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Well, I think you were saying um, it was pretty easy to chrome out stuff in Final Cut, right? Mm, so if you wanted, to yeah, but this is black, this is black though so it would be i mean you could just do an ad on whatever you're oh yeah this is screen compositing mode screen, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah dj panic what else we need to talk about king i don't know man one of these days we are going to do one where we talk about that uh Holla back girl edit. Oh yeah. That you wanted me to do. That was you were like, oh, I have to break it down to, into a way that was, you know, comprehensible for other people <laughs> to understand. <laughs> oh, that's what you you said. You need to explain it like you're explaining it to a five year old. Yeah. I don't think everybody understands. <laughs> it's pretty complicated, right? <laughs> it is. I could attempt to pull it up if you want to talk about it, or we could not. <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see where, where it goes. We we could save that for another date. Oh, okay. We can. If you, <laughs> whatever works, man. I don't care. I got nowhere else. I got nothing else going on. Yeah, Easy says, take all my money. Yep. They will get yeah. you. They're not playing around. DJ Panic, you got any visual editing questions? Anybody got any fiber questions for King? No fiber questions. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't work good when the lawn man cuts it. <laughs> so I like the new loop that you had set up. You want to talk about that? You want to show it? Uh yeah, I can show it. I don't know even know if I saved like let me pull up my um give me a second while I pull up my app uh, my Photoshop file. Photoshop open, open recent. I don't know. Hold on. Adjustments. Walter wants to know how you guys making transitions for Emmy. So the way that I do it is sort of like how you would do a stinger for uh, OBS. So you would have an area where you switch off to the other deck and I fire it in, in the sample player. So there, I have a sample that comes up, it fills the screen and then it switches off to the next deck. So on my lemur, controller which I could show you here's my setup so you see these ones that have trans so on this particular layer I've got three different transitions so when I hit one of these buttons it is picking a preset type of transition and it's firing off the um, the file in the sample player and it's doing an auto fade all at the same time. So it gives you the illusion of a custom transition, even though, I mean, it is a custom transition, but it's not, it's not attached to the fader. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a big setup and most people that I've talked to uh, like trying to because they'll want like a logo animation or they want this or want that and I'll be like well that's cool but what about this you know you could have a thing where you see your logo between every song and you got a transition anyway so if you use it like this and I said but you know there's a prerequisite in that you need an external MIDI controller to make that work and you have to 
you know, program mixed emergency to make all that happen. Well, speaking of MIDI controllers, when you're running Resolume and you're running mixed emergency and you got everything like, do you have everything mapped to one MIDI controller or do you like un un unassign something? Cause I have um, the MPC, whatever the Akai thing for my Resolume and it's pretty much got a pre pre-designed layout. And it's like, I I'm, I'll always struggle with, should I just start unassigning buttons so I can assign them to the sample player for mixed emergency? Cause I don't want like, you know, a bunch of things firing off at once <laughs> or, to, or can you sign a bunch of MIDI um, to one button and have it all do it? Like have it do like multiple things with different. Yeah, you uh, could, softwares. you mean in mix emergency or other software? Well, yeah, if you wanted to fire like a Resolume effect and a mix emergency effect at the same time with one button. Yeah, as long as you wanted them both to be on. To be on, yeah. yeah. That would struggle work. With it. I'm like, oh, I want the sample player to go, but you know, all these buttons are already assigned to something and it's like, oh, <laughs> what, what are we gonna do? Yeah, I've been rocking the same layout on my lemur for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you got something so, that works, it pr pretty much becomes muscle memory. Oh, so damn, got... Crush is here. No way. I Where? think he needs. I think he needs to join this chat. Oh, hey, homie. Were your ears ringing? You want to send him a link? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll send him a link. Let's see if we can pull them in. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, Put a little cheese in the trap. <laughs> Was it like a cardboard box? Oh, he the... says he can't. Oh, come on, Crush. So Crush was in able to do his set last night because there was a big uh, tornado in his area. And I looked at the radar. It looked crazy down there. I hope his house is cool. Yeah, is that his sister's? I see it. I see you. Hole in roof and flossing. Flooding. I was like, he's Damn. flooding and flossing. In your house or your sister's house? Wait for it. Wait for it. King, did you know that Evan Clark's doing a set tonight? Where? On his Twitch, I guess. I did not know, or maybe he did, but you know, all, all, everything that was breaking up yesterday in our interview. <laughs> breaking the news. There you go. Evan Clark's doing a set tonight. Be on the lookout. Hole in my roof, flooding in my backyard. Oh, damn. Damn, dude. Sorry to hear it. He's yeah. on Twitch. Is he on Twitch right now? Well, we'll have to find out. King, you want to show your screen? Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, share. Share screen. Okay. I think it said uh, you cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. You take it up all the screen time, man. How do I uh, unshare? Stop. Well, it's at the bottom of the screen, or the, oh, probably at the top, where the where the. There, there you go. You go. Bam. I got the chat up. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, what are geology skins? Yeah, that should work. But yeah, uh, anybody that hasn't had a chance, uh, make sure to go to the DJology uh, YouTube channel and I explained uh, how I made my skins and stuff. I'm going to leave all that, all that offline, offline, offline. And it's really cool if, uh, you know, anybody out there that's using um, Photoshop, I mean, you can just make, make all the templates and then you have all your different looks. So all I did was take this and then, I, and then I put them into folders right there. So I put it into my Premiere and then can move that around. Like, oh, I'll probably double up or if you just wanted that. And then, like, I think it's important that everybody should have a starting screen so that um, they can start to drag or collect um, viewers. 
you know, before they start. So for me, you know, I just put this up and it says, oh, starting at the top of the hour in a place that you could reach. And if anybody hasn't been using digital juice, I mean, I just, just the background that I pulled off a of digital juice. A little tunnel right there. Yeah, I thought that looked really good. Yeah, they've got tons of these that are like this. I, this, this will probably be like for next week. <laughs> Sneak preview. And, and who knows? Maybe uh, maybe I'll get a few of those visualizers from the, uh, learn how to use Final Cut, I guess. I don't know. It'll be like my first project to make some skins with it, I guess. Yeah, I, I wish they uh, on Digital Juice had these but square. How would I go about that? Like if I find a circle and it's got like this, but I want it to be square so I could like actually take my video mix emergency um, input and put it in there. I'll probably, maybe I'll get the saber and play around with that. You could take this and mirror it across to one side and then mirror it again down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could take the right side and put it on the left side and then center it and then go from the top to the bottom and then you'd almost have a full circle. Well, they have the full circle, but I wanted a like I want a square of this. Oh. So that I could put Yeah, you get that saber, you could definitely come up with something real close. Saber get uh, cuz when your saber when you were using that, I didn't see you know how you know how far that comes off. Mm -hmm. Um well there's different there's different presets and you can play around with the settings okay so you, you can get that uh that fuzz off the beam yeah mm -hmm. yeah but for me you know um and i you know, i thought it was really cool because I, I don't think i'm gonna keep stream labs and i was like well how can i not keep stream labs i'm just gonna uh, and then i have digital juice and it's like because right now i have stream labs and, and what's that like 12 to 15 dollars 19 dollars a month but I also have a restream because I, I want to make sure that you know all my streams go to all the different platforms. So it's like, I don't want to spend 40, 40 bucks. So I was like, oh, let's get rid of Streamlabs. Well, why is Streamlabs so cool? Well, they have skins. Well, I don't know. I guess we could just make our own and that'd be really cool. That, that you know, be more customizable. Um, maybe, maybe get a widget, you know, for a countdown or something. Let me see here. Is that it? What was there was like pieces that were like fractured orange wall things that were like moving in front. Like you had your screen in the middle. Yeah. And then there was these pieces that seemed to be moving forward. I like that. Well, I had that's what it was. I don't know what you were talking what pieces were moving forward. See around the top where it's that frame that you just turned off. That. So like the edges left and right of that, you had a part of it where it looked like it was kind of moving towards you in 3D space. Well, this is basically all that I had. I had this in front of it. And then I went through this, like I had, all of it is basically just one PDF file and then whatever I ch chose to like, you know, to see. So I, w I would just, you know, save this file, save as, and we'll say, uh, oh, fire, sk fire skins right there. Or, is this your OBS down there? Do you have it already plugged in? Yeah. OBS for whatever reason takes up a lot of. Is it gonna work? Maybe I should quit it. Pull it up. Crush sent me this story. It says lightning knocks out power to three drainage pumps overnight, flooding Broadmoor. So this is pretty much what I had going on. Is that the scene you were talking about? I guess it's those lines from the back because it almost looked like like these that frame was kind of like coming off and moving forward, but I guess that's it. 
Yeah, man, I'm I'm just playing tricks with you. Mm. <laughs> Your mind's playing tricks on you. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you know, I just go into the Photoshop, and, and I and I make like the different um, different scenes, to save the file, and then render it out. And I make it, you know, with however long however long the uh the thing is i think it's only like 30 seconds or something like that so if what scroll in what is that 112 i could put it on put it on 115 something like that shift down yeah 130 it's 20 seconds do you know what evan's twitch handle is i don't know do i know oh yeah. i don't know Is it DJ Evan Clark? Probably. <laughs> you can see how slow my computer's going now. I mean, there's that. Two followers. I just followed him. Is is that is that it? I'm guessing that's it. Are we in the right ballpark? Crush. Uh, going with it, I guess. But yeah, that's just me. And I, you know, when people are making their, um, making their own, you know, scenes and stuff, it's always good to have that. I mean, this is just what I like and then have, you got one where your my music video is here and up to the top, but but no green screen because you got, I always got like a scene to where to jump off, and so if I didn't want to be on screen, and then this at the other one where you got the main screen there, and then over there. But I also thought it was important to have one where you were like, you know, up front and personal, just so if you were grabbing like show wise, I thought it was important to be like you know like the focal point if you were talking, but. Those are just things to think about when people are making their own scenes, you know, recommendations. So is V running this for you while you're playing? She was for a little while. And then um, I, know I have like um, a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. And yesterday I wasn't using the turntables. So I had the room to put this next to the, what is that? SRT, the Pioneer SRT. So, See, yeah, crush. No. Oh, what did crush say? He said later. Oh, but he didn't confirm. The... He said, "I think so." <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, was, that was that was a lot of a lot of help right there. <laughs> That's funny. One thing though, man, I wish OBS would just, if you were, you didn't have to put the, the audio channel on every single scene. It's annoying. I just wish it was, oh, it's just what it is. Just stay with that. But, you know, you live and you learn as you go. Yeah, like a master channel. Yeah, maybe because we're DJs, we're like, man, we just don't want to keep putting that everywhere. Because for me, it's like you're going to switch from one scene to a next scene. Um, what you're going to get a little bit of a phase as it switches, you know, one channel, the same channel to the, to the same next channel, you know? <laughs> well, apparently it doesn't. No, yeah. It do yeah. He, it he doesn't, says, but... Chris says like VMix cause VMix will let you have a, a, a channel that's constant. See? Yeah. That's what audio. OBS needs. Yeah. That's what was going through my mind. I was like, really? Every time I switch a scene, it's going to fade into itself? <laughs> I, ha I have vMix, but it's like a low end. And I don't think I can even do that on mine. Oh, you have like a cheaper version of vMix? Yeah. I'm not in the cash money players with the DJ Crush. You ain't on that level? <laughs> <laughs> worldwide i'm on that free obs baby yeah. <laughs> i'm working for bus pass 
I have a C version crush, I believe. That crush, he's always like saying he's gonna leave and he's still hanging out. We lose him? Oh, I gotta get into his chat here. So, uh, yeah, any, any questions? Ish, I wish. And then 4K. <laughs> Yeah, here we are. I'm about to give out Crush's phone number. So that if you have technical issues, you can just call him direct. <laughs> yeah. If your fiber has been cut by your lawn keeper, <sighs> <laughs> he will no. help you out. Yeah, no. Well, we managed think, to stretch Keith? out this simple tutorial to about two hours, so I think we're good. That's because you're amazing. <laughs> Curtis says he's got a lot to process. All Curtis, right. hit us back if you have questions. Yeah, it's always great when people are active and involved. So we got to have E come in and uh, shut this thing down. Oh, do we just leave or does he leave? He's got to come in and turn it off. Oh. I wonder if I text him, maybe he can. It's good to stay up. <laughs> He's in the middle of mixing. Oh, is he on the channel? No, he's got a, a project he's doing. Oh, okay. What time did we start this thing? <laughs> Crush says, G-Force will be Santa before December. That's right. I'm just happy I got a haircut today. No bandana. You went to the salon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one place that was open. <laughs> well, they're saying we can just leave. Okay. Well. And I guess it'll shut itself off. But see, E is still here, though. Yeah, he's, um, I don't know. You just the, can't see him. The head of the account, yeah. So what about that, guys? What do you say? Maybe it still works. Well, Maybe I can turn it off. Well, it is recording. I was really hoping to get this recording. I have no control. Tell him a bedtime story. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Once there was a DJ named Crush. <laughs> he was very naughty. <laughs> well, anything you guys want to know? Because it's going to take forever to get off the line. <laughs> Let's see. He didn't well, answer me got, back. What do y'all got questions about? Crush, you got a question? <laughs> King, what um what VJs you been enjoying on the channel? Man, I've been tuning in all like all the time. Um, I like Second Nature. I like Sod, very interactive. Um, I, I like the Larry Larry show. Your your show, of course, is amazing. Um, 
I did tune. What's the guy from Japan? I tuned into him, and it, Tashi. It was, yeah, it, it it was very interesting set. It was mostly like James Brown and live type um, performances, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This is different." Like I had like if the tracks he was playing, I like hadn't seen it. I was like, "Whoa, this is cool." My overnight crew been killing it. If they show up, <laughs> who's part of the overnight assassins? Who does that? <laughs> Anybody know? I can't say. Yeah, I don't know. Some probably like really stellar VJs. Well, Chris is, is not sure. Crush is blowing up that uh, that chat there, buddy. Don't you got a leaky house? Well, King, I guess we could talk about something else. Yeah, man. <laughs> guess you're gonna Let's have to if... pull up that uh, that Hollaback girl. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think I've switched systems since I worked on this, so it may or may not work out. Well, we'll just kind of wing it. Go ahead, share that screen, buddy. Yep, see, I'm missing some things. Well, we'll get an idea, hopefully. Let's see. I'm going to have to start looking up some jokes. Uh Uh-oh, watch out. This thing is bananas. All right, let's see what we got. How much time do you spend putting something like this together, man? Too much time. Let's see what's going on with this one. Nothing. So you just edit all day, all night, right? You just sit in front of the computer nonstop? (laughs) So I use a mask and some mocha here to uh, to key her out. But then, like, since I was getting rid of this black, then this bananas part was showing through. So I had this mask to just make sure that I keep that. Oh, OK. So that's what's going on there. This will take a second to load up. Whoa. So this part, oh man, this thing is heavy. So I took that that I mask out and I put it in element 3D. And in there, I can make duplicates. So I've got duplicates going in Z and X and Y. And so then I've got this 3D banana that comes down. (laughs) I like spins. And I put them in space. Uh, The space is just a background. So I'm moving the camera. Maybe I can do, oh, it's already on half res. How about quarter res? Struggling. So how do you work on a project when that's what you got to deal with? Well, maybe if I wasn't streaming. It's better? So you get the banana. Comes in. See what else we got. So then I got this dance going. So this one, she like kind of raises up in and out of the scene. Let 
There's that first part again. Oh, so I got some motion bro, like a wipe right there. Okay, so here's the main scene. So here I've got my Gwens. Yeah. And then I use Reptile on this banana background that I found. So I've got, I made a loop of some going up and some going down. So you got that happening. What about the video in the center that's doing that square transition thingy? This is an Element 3D from Video Copilot. So I'll open that up so you can take a look at it. No, he didn't do the Jason, whole edit for Matt. No, I did, no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be foolish. So the thing about this that's tricky that I had some issues with is when I turn this around, I want it to be facing front. So I had to remap everything on this 3D model that I made. I made this in Blender. And uh, so I have two instances of this. And in Element, what you can do is just sort of move back and forth between the instances. And so that creates the turning effect. Whoa. UV map. No, it's not a UV map. It's just a, um, I mean, it is a UV map. It's just a texture map. So let me find it again. So in this scene, you can go to custom layers and texture maps. So I've got this layer, Holla Bat Girl Break. So I already edited the video and I just brought in the elements that I needed to work with, you know, for the breaks. So in this scene, here's my texture. It's going on that surface. So I've got one texture for the front and I've got one texture for the back. And then this is all the in-between parts. Huh. Golly. So I think this is black because I'm missing, I haven't installed the composite brush tool, which I guess I used on this. Because <laughs> I switched from Windows 7, Windows 7 to 10, like maybe late last year. Was that a good move? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. You, you got to ask, man. <laughs> Yeah, I was holding on to seven for for tight, too tight. Yep, Avionics is here. He loves Element 3D. I've seen you've been working in it. Element 3D, totally worth the money. But yep. man, this thing is so old. I wish they would update it. Yeah, we, we actually went over the Sabre plugin. So here I'm just animating between the front and the back, and then I scale it up and then I scale it back. And then I think I've got some audio reactors going to kind of push these apart. Audio reactors. <laughs> the, well, the, lin the linear thing that I talked about earlier yep, yep. is making these kind of I think I'm like pushing some of them back in 3D space and some of them forward. That's probably just like a randomizer. Wow. Maybe I should bring up the actual video so you can see what this does. Yeah, like how many, like how much time did that, like that effect, that scene, did you like cover? Does it cover like 30 seconds? Something like that, 40 seconds. Do you do, you don't do the whole song. 
through After Effects, right? Nope. Just that one second, like like a minute of it. You can't hear this, can you? Um, I could probably hear your through your microphone. Oh uh, yeah. A little bit. So I'm just cutting up some B-roll. And then I've got the scene. So, I mean, that was just for an intro. I mean, it, it makes no sense for me to spend so much time on doing that. But, you know, you get an idea and you're like, man, this thing is bananas. <laughs> Let's see how <laughs> bananas it really is. All right, so. <clears throat> the other thing you'll notice about this video, which I will encourage people to do, even though they probably won't want to, is I converted it to 16 by 9. This is a 4 by 3 video. So I went into every cut and reframed it to be 16 by 9. This is also called a tilt and scan. I was going to say, is it a pan and scan? It's the reverse. It's the tilt and scan. And to me, it's so much better to have your videos full frame because like, especially if you're doing effects, it's just gonna look like ass at four by three, in my opinion. So I take it you had like a ProRes of the source file or like an MOV, it looks clean. Well, you know, uh, YouTube partnered with Universal sometime and released a bunch of remasters of videos oh, okay so this one was actually 1080 to start with and it looks impressive if you go to youtube and watch it it's pretty incredible you guys all uh all done i mean we could keep talking all day but i guess we're done <laughs> So tune in next week when Second Nature may or may not be here. May or may not. May or may not. Tune in to find out. Yep. But there'll be something going on. Maybe Crush. If you say so. <laughs> I mean, he's saying it. He's saying it right here. I, I, I yeah. see him like completely clogging up the chat. Hey, you seen this intro right here? Yeah, he's pretty active. I think the last like 34 comments are from him. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for all tuning in. Um, I, I know cool. I learned a lot. And, <laughs> and now that you guys have taken your break from watching music videos to learn about making music videos, we can go back go to the back channel. To Adam Orth is Adam Orth is crushing it right now, and then Nax coming up at uh, uh, he's on at uh six p.m. Pacific, nine p.m. Eastern, and then some bald-headed jackass is on after him. Ah, <laughs> I'll be tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If anyone has any questions about things that we should cover on here on the Friday tutorial session, let us know. Sweet. And this video will be available right after this. All right. See ya. Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. Offline. All right. Thanks. King, I'll upload the video to the Dropbox. Uh, um, in a few. Thank you, sir. And then I'm going to delete it off my hard drive because I've got too many of them. Yeah, the other ones I got. Well, I'm going to start purging all of them because they take up too much space. Yeah, well, just let me know when the other one loads and I'll, I'll, I'll get it as soon as, I, as soon as you tell me. Cool. I'll uh, chat with you guys later. Thanks, G. Good talking to you. Good to see you. Bye. See you, E. Later. <laughs>